the Monday report. So his election as the fourth governor of Nairobi County was preceded by great controversy as he battled allegations of questionable education credentials. It was a court battle that saw him clash with education oversight bodies and law enforcers alike. He would later capture the seat on a UDA ticket on August 9th, becoming the fourth governor of Nairobi City County. Tonight, Governor Johnson Sakaja reflects on his 2022 journey on Citizen TV and the political ally he feels turned against him in the 11th hour. This story was produced by a very own Gatete Njoroge. On April 9th this year, President William Ruto was the Kenya Kwanzaa presidential candidate and veiled Johnson Sakaja as the coalition's candidate in the race to succeed Governor Anne Kananu, who took over office after the impeachment of Mike Sonko as the second governor of Nairobi. There must be give and take in certain positions. Margaret Wanjiru was eyeing the seat, then dropped her bid in favor of Sakaja and opted to run for the senatorial position instead. We are left with uh, 218. But Sakaja was in for a rude shock as his journey was interrupted by four petitioners challenging his clearance by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission on ground that Sakaja lacked a valid university degree. The cases could see Sakaja shuttle in and out of court at a time when the campaigns were at a fever pitch. The High Court dismissed the case three weeks to the elections and cleared the IBC of any wrongdoing in approving Sakaja to vie for the gubernatorial position. I was told I reached class two. I was told, <laughs> I was told many things. But the truth came out, you know, and uh, I'm glad that we have a strong judicial system that uh, is not about the rule of man, but the rule of law. But they say no pain, no palm, no cross, no crown, no girl, no glory, no thorns, no throne. Um, that process refined me. I developed a thick skin. I used to move from the court to the DCI, to campaign, to my campaign office, to court, to threats of, I think you guys came to my office one day when they wanted to come raid my office saying I have servers, you know. But I have no bitterness. Governor claims the move to derail his dream to lead the city county was engineered by a man he refers to as his friend, retired President Uhuru Kenyatta, a man he worked so hard to ensure he ascends to the highest office in the land in 2013 and in 2017. I hold no grudge against whoever was behind it, and we all know who was behind it. I miss my friend Uhuru Kenyatta as a friend. Our journey was very long. Politics divided us. I have respect for him. I remember the day we sat and said, you can be president. And I did a presentation, I remember it was in Mudaiga, at Jomo Kishaga's house. And we were, I was with Anwar Iguru, Antonia Kihara, and a young man called Marvin Tumbo. And I did a presentation. And I showed him the numbers, this was 2008 or nine. And he looked at it and he was like, are you sure? He called his brother. And they stood outside in the rain for an hour. And he came back and said, you know what? I'm ready. But in the time he had taken, I had my guru and told you, I was so upset. They told him, my friend, if you're not ready, we have another candidate. This is our, this is our candidate. <laughs> we'll be our candidate. And he said, no, 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 please give me my 10 years. And we've had a journey. Sakaja likens his journey to that of the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, who in 2013 had thrown in the towel and supported Musalia Mudavadi, only for him to change his mind days after. Even the system then was not for him. I remember him having to give up and he went and picked Musalia Mudavadi to be the candidate. And we said no, we took delegates to Multimedia University. I didn't know how to pay for them even. But I said, now today, in fact that's the day I became a politician. <laughs> I sang. Okay. I said, Nama Bodrum, hapa natume kata kabisa. And I was wearing a yellow tie that day. And I said, there are two Uru Kenyatas. There's one who decides this is why the family will go on holiday, this is what we will do. But there's another one who is a representation of our hopes and dreams. You can't step away from the presidency. He says the election of the Kenya Kwanzaa government, despite all the setbacks, was proof that the people were more powerful than the deep state. There is a deep state in terms of uh, uh, statecraft. There are few individuals who make certain decisions. There are few individuals who have great influence over billions in resources. What we have in Kenya, despite that, 
is that the statecraft can never be louder than the voice of the people. And we have the rule of law. The fourth governor of Nairobi says what has been holding the city back was poor leadership that failed to involve county staff in decision making, something that he is changing through suggestion boxes. I have 13,422 staff who on the 29th of August, just four days after I was sworn in, I met all of them and I called them to the square and they said, many of us have worked here from the 90s, 80s, we have never met a mayor. We've never been addressed by a governor. We only come here to riot. I opened for them three suggestion boxes at City Hall, where I'm the only one with the key. And I'm the one who picks up those letters, and they have given me immense information that is helping us redirect our city. The problem has been leadership. Another challenge in the city has been garbage collection, which he says he will solve by acquiring refuse compactors and employ young people to clean the city. From the day we got in, we've collected 214,000 tons of garbage. Contractors had been on strike for a long time, for more than six months. Garbage had become, it, it, it was made a cash cow, a business. More than 50, no, 46 companies being paid to deliver garbage to Dandora dump site. They have worked with the Waybridge people. Some of those trucks go with stones inside. Or they add water to make them heavier. I told them, no, we are changing. Their contracts expire in March, April. I found a pending bill of three billion for garbage. We used to have young people who clean Nairobi when I was young. And uh, we saw what we call Camero. The trucks that would come, you know, Tuesday and Thursday it will come. I'm bringing those back. In this budget that has passed, and remember my, my budget passed on day 95 of me being in office, on the 95th day. In that budget we put money for 51 trucks, RCs, refuse compactors. We put money for 3,000 young people to be employed. With recent reports of poor services at health facilities operated by the county government, Governor Sakaja has vowed to initiate radical reforms to ensure Nairobi residents get quality services. I've seen four mothers sharing a bed. And Mama Lucy, I've seen a lady who's given birth the previous day, C-section, sitting on a hard bench the next day. We will not compromise on healthcare. Nairobi serves or provides more health services than any other government in East Africa. More than the national government, more than Uganda, more than Tanzania, we would want 34 facilities. But a facility is not just a whole. NMSD 24 hospitals, and I thank them for what they were able to do, but a lot of these things were done for, to, to show that we are doing something. What is a hospital without medicine, without a nurse, without a doctor, without equipment? It's just a social hall. So we're going to equip those facilities. The governor who has been on the receiving end following his controversial revocation of licenses to nightclubs operating in residential areas says he will stick by his decision. We have no problems with bus. We have a problem with nightclubs making noise in residential areas. And you cannot say that there'll be job losses. Who is employed to make noise? No, there's no job called making noise. So just reduce the volume. Just switch off at 10. People can continue celebrating. But be considerate. Think about your neighbor. There's one in, uh, next to a hospital where families were coming to discharge their patients who are almost going crazy because of noise. Can you just be considerate? We've become competitive to a fault. We only think about profits. Can't we think of the next person? That children cannot sleep or do homework because adults are having fun downstairs. Is that the society we've become? Governor Sakaja, who hopes to collect 100 million shillings of tax revenue a day from January, believes that there is need for the National Treasury to have a better cash flow management system to the counties as the delay in disbursements to counties continues to affect service delivery in all devolved units.